Hello, welcome to Mix Training. This is Better Mix, and today we're gonna see how to render a crown splash in Renderman. All right, so this is gonna be really fun. You can see the image sheet looks pretty cool, and let's get started. So what I did here, you can see the scene here. It's, this is my basic scene. You see, I shaded a little bit. Uh, I have just one frame. This is this is meant to be just a still frame. So I have just this uh, crown splash here. Uh, it has a lot of surface here for the uh, rest of the lake and there's some ducks there that I are actually just planar ducks since they were gonna be just in the um, background out of focus I just decided to make them like that which is works perfectly for this and gives us uh, it gives the scene a lot more life and realism I guess so let's see what I did so it's gonna be really simple so what I did, it's created a crown splash simulation from the uh, Houdini particle fluid here. You can create your own crown splash from here, this icon here. Then I just uh, let it run uh, a little bit. Like here you can see, we can maybe let it run a little bit. Uh, it's going to be a bit heavy, I guess. Uh, but we can maybe let it run a few frames with a low resolution. See, it's doing that, it's doing its thing. So this is what I did. So when I found the frame that I liked, I just uh, saved that to file. You can see there's very little uh, points here. There's uh, not, much, not much points here, but I lowered this to 0 0.02 uh, for my final one. Then I just uh, went to the uh, fluid thing here. Uh, got a frame. You can see here's the representation of what we're caching can go ahead and forward, I guess. See, you're gonna see something like this. Of course, this has like a material here. Um, and then you just save it to file. So that's what I did here. And uh, let's bring it on in another one. Let's say, I'm gonna say this is the crown splash. And this is exactly what I did here. You can see I'm gonna just copy this uh, file. So I don't have to load it again. So I just did that and load that file from disk. It's just a BGO file. It's a single frame. There's no animation on this. Let me make a new scene so we can have a better understanding of this. All right, so I have a few, uh, new scene here. I'm gonna call this crown. I'm gonna paste that file that I got. Uh, I'm gonna save this file the same place I have the other one. And now I have my crown here. You can see that's my geometry. It's pretty cool. That's what I have. All right, we need a few things. I want to use the render my shelf. If you don't have this shelf, please see my getting uh, getting started with Renderman video, or just uh, add it from here. We're gonna use a dome light for this. Just put a dome light. Click there, and. Uh, Click dome light, press enter on the viewport, you have a dome light. We're going to use a uh, surface shader, just click there. And we're going to use an RAS wrap. So it creates our wrap here in uh, outputs. That's what we're going to use. We're going to use a camera as well. Let me copy my camera from my preview. Nah, you to create a new camera. You create a new camera here, doesn't matter. Okay, I made my camera really close because this is supposed to be um, like a micro shot or micro shot. It's, it's really small. Uh, so I set my focal length to 100 and make it something like that. I also uh, scale these points on, on the outside of the crown. You see there's, uh, it's too small. Now I just move my camera. So for that, I just uh, pick the points at the outside. I think it, it might not be the best way to do this, but it works. Uh, so I just did this. And then scale these guys. Like that. Then I give it some uh, soft radius. Alright, so after I had this done like this, just stretch this, just to give it uh, more area, whatever. Uh, then I just uh, started with shading. So let's go to our camera. This is what we're gonna see from the camera. Just, it's a good, it's a good uh, angle. That's good. So the other thing we need here for renderman 
is for the for the dome light we need an HDR of course. So let's go to the, to the light, and I'm gonna use an HDR here. And I'm using I'm using an HDR from HDR Heaven, which it's uh, free. You can go there and get their their files from there. It's pretty cool. I'm using one that is called Pines something. The one I'm using is this one. It's called Misty Pines. So if you want to go ahead and download this, you can download it, and you can convert it with the TX Make uh, texture for uh, RenderMan. Yeah, you can see that as well in my introduction to RenderMan. Then uh, I'm gonna add that here. I already had had that here, and I already converted that. It's gonna load it in the viewport here. So here it is. You can see the the, uh, the HDR I'm using there. It look cool. Looks alright for this kind of effect. So now the other thing we're gonna do is go to the shop section. And remember the RenderMan still uses the shop section, and inside the ResNet. Uh, RIS net network. There is the pot tracer, which is what we're going to render with, and there's the surface. So let's call this water. All right. So we're going to do here uh, for the water material. It's going to be really simple. We're going to go to the diffuse, turn the diffuse all the way down. We're not going to use that. Go to the glass section. Put this to 0.97 and 0.97 for uh, diffraction and reflection. Uh, the uh, refraction color, we're going to lower that a little bit, and something like that. And the roughness, it's going to be 0 0.01, I think. Refractive index of 0 0.3. And uh, I think that's it. That's about it for the water. Now we can assign it to the object here. Ground. Uh, assign the uh, water there. Accept. Uh, the light already has the material, the uh, texture. You can go now to the uh, RIS wrap, and uh, I'm gonna change this to it. Uh, so I want to it use it, not uh, and play. Here is the patch tracer. It's already set when you use the uh, shelf command from here. So if you didn't, you have to create your own patch tracer and put it here. Um, let's go to the hider and just reduce the samples a little bit for testing. 16 is all right. Override the camera resolution. And so it gives us half and uh, save and now we can render this. All right, so here's the image. Uh, it's a little bit uh, too bright, but uh, it's giving us um, all right results. Uh, what I did is I, I rotated the light a little bit, I think. Uh, so we can go to the transform section and rotate it here. And just find the angle that you want to use. Uh, using a low um, maximum samples here, you can get a really quick results here in your in your uh, it window. But you can see it's looking pretty nice already. I'm gonna center this a little bit more. We're not, we're not gonna use ducks in this, uh, but uh, you can if you want to add any anything else. Okay, the thing that I want to address now is this darkness. And by default, the RenderMan uh, Rob has a very low uh, specular uh, trace depth. So I made this bigger, and you can see there's a lot of black there inside the uh, glass. It should be transparent, but it's not. So let's fix that. And the way we're going to fix that, let's give that rendering. We're going to go here to uh, the random one wrap. And here in this gear, just select the edit uh, rendering parameters. It's going to open this uh, huge section. I mean, huge window here with the parameters. Uh, there's parameters for everything here. Uh, we're going to search for uh, specular. Specular. And inside, uh, let's collapse this inside the uh, Pixel 20, Pixel, Pixel Random 21 should be specular trace depth. So let's add that and apply and accept. Now we can change that, should be here in the render section. By default, you can see it's it, it's just two, which is pretty low. Uh, by default, I think in other applications like Maya, it's up to four. So if you want to add this and put it, uh, by default there, it should be matching your renders from other applications. Let's give it another render and you can see the difference now. All right, you can see this. There's a huge difference between what we had before, all that blackness there, 
and what we have now, which is pretty cool. If you have any more areas you want to clear out, you have more uh, clear areas of glass or, or different types of glass, you can make this trace them uh, higher. But for us, it works nice for this section. So the other thing I wanted, I, got, I wanted to give it this a little bit of a bluish uh, um, mood. So what I did is just go to the light tone and added a little bit of blue on the light, actually. That's just a very shape trick that I did. Alright, so, but you can see, it gives it a little bit more life. I don't know, it just being completely white, it doesn't, uh, I don't know, it doesn't feel good to me. So, by adding that bluish tint, it, it looks better. Now you can see it from the previous, it looks a little bit dead and then has a little bit more life so there you go just if you want to add some ducks like i did you can go ahead and add them i just uh created these ducks from a picture it's not not something that hard to do you can see here's the ducks that i did i just copy those and you can see that they're just ducks i did a trace uh on a picture of some ducks uh, it's pretty messy, but it works for the background. And then I uh, copy the uh, the attribute uh, from the uh, the picture to the points there. I just divided the, the the surfaces like that, and then transformed them into place. And uh, that was it. It was it's I could say it's not that big of a deal, but uh, you can see if I move the camera over here, we can see maybe a little bit of those ducks there something like that maybe and um, now uh, to give your final render of this you can see that it's a little bit too grainy for this right now we need to go just to the hider and uh, put a 64 I, I use what 256 I think for samples and the final image and then I went to the camera and uh, yeah discard that went to the camera here and in my viewport, selected my camera there, turn on the the handle for the camera, right click on it and um, shows the focus handle there. You can see this is where the focus will be. Put it here on the square, you can put it here on your splash and then make it really narrow here. So we have kind of a out of focus uh, effect. We can go back here. Let's put it to 32 just to see a preview. Override the camera resolution, maybe, and uh, have a preview render again. You can turn off incremental if you don't want to see the buckets uh, going all over and uh, on top of each other, and just go to the final image w at once. So let's do that. So there you go. That's uh, how it's going to look. The ducks look bad, and the background is not showing, which is something that we should fix. So for the ducks, I just created um, a constant shader, and I imported the uh, the color attribute from the surface. You can see this is the CS attribute there. The way you do that is just uh, put an attribute, an attribute node, and just enable this add uh, default mappings, which will give you some uh, default mappings for RenderMan, and the color in RenderMan is called CS. So there you go, you can see them here in my, you can see them here in my uh, object spreadsheet, uh, geometry spreadsheet, the CD is mapped to CS, N to N, etc. Uh, so that's pretty good, and we just do that with this node. For the dome map to show on the camera, we're going to just go to the light, go to the render section and the PR man attributes, just make it to toggle the camera visibility. Then we can uh, shoot another preview render. All right, cool. Now you can see this is rendering and it's going directly to the final thing. The ducks have the color and the um, we can see the HDRI in the uh, background, but we're missing uh, the depth of fill. And for the depth of fill, we're gonna go, let me just stop that. Let's gonna go to the uh, RIS again, go to the render section. Sorry, not the render section the depth of field section and enable that and, and this is going to use whatever we set in the camera previously so just be sure that you set that in the camera 
or here in the uh, in the attributes here for Houdini. Just gonna get these attributes and use those for RenderMan. So make sure you set that and that you turn on this enable depth fill. So now you can see we have this beautiful depth of field here. You can see, like, get some ducks there in the background. It gives it more life to the scene. It's pretty cool. Make it uh, makes it look a little bit more realistic and stuff. Depth of field, it's looking all right. Seems like okay, okay to me. A little bit too close, maybe, but it's up to your taste. All right, cool. You have uh, this is looking really amazing. Maybe we could uh, add more uh, specular trace depth here to get rid of this blackness. Uh, but the depth of field is looking pretty cool. Uh, but I might think to might need to open it a little bit more because I'm getting too much uh, blurriness on this area, which is the focus area. Uh, but sometimes it's good because photographs are not always perfect. But uh, it's up to you. We can expand this just a little bit and that will help us. And the other thing, uh, we can go maybe to the hider, put it, this back to incremental 16 and try to see if we can uh, use maybe six uh, specular uh, trace depth here. All right, so it seems like we are not getting rid of all that blackness, but uh, Again, uh, you don't want to get rid of all that dark areas sometimes because some, that might be a reflection and it not might be uh, it, it may not be that it's uh, something on your uh, she, uh, an error on the shader. So uh, there's always it, it's always good to have contrast between black and 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 dark dark and white areas for give to give shape uh, to your image. So it's pretty cool. Looks it's looking good there. All right, so I think it's time to shoot the final render. So for that, let's leave it at six uh, for the specular depth. Uh, let's go to the hider, put it to 256, I guess. Uh, not incremental. Uh, the split's gonna be it. Uh, do not override the camera when a full resolution. And uh, you can use the path tracer if you want. Uh, what I did for mine, I went here uh, to the ResNet and created the, uh, where's the integrator? I use the uh, UPVP integrator here. I didn't change any settings. Uh, so I just created that and added here. This one, it's a little bit more cool, I guess, for outdoor scenes. It gives it more kind of bounces of light and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. So once you have all that stuff done, you can go and uh, should your final render and that's gonna be it all right guys i hope you learned something for this uh if you did please share like and subscribe if you haven't i really appreciate that and that's it let's keep learning together and i will see you in the next one right cool